Hello everyone, welcome to Worship Today. We're at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad that you're with us. It is now the second week of Advent. It's an exciting time in the church year as we are preparing for the approaching Christmas season. We are remembering that God sent his son to be the savior of the world. What we're gonna do over the next couple weeks of Advent is think through what the, um, what the word and the title Christ means when we say Jesus Christ or the Lord Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus the Lord what does that mean that he is the Christ so we're going to kind of explore that take a look at um, what that means and its significance to us um, over the next couple weeks of Advent because it's a it's a powerful title that's full of gospel images for us to help us understand why God sent his son, um, born in Bethlehem, to be our savior. It's a great day of, um, to be in, uh, in God's house. It's a great time of year to, to worship the Lord and to remember all of his promises and how faithful he is. I'm glad you're with us. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. everybody welcome to worship on the second Sunday in Advent we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen beloved in the Lord let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and I sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this year confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is from the Old Testament book of Malachi, beginning at chapter 3, the first four verses. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. 
The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in the days gone by, as in former years. Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at the 17th verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And our gospel lesson for today is from the Gospel of John, um, selected verses from the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to witness concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because before I was born, he already was. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but he confessed freely. I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not Messiah or Elijah or the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. We continue now. 
by confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
to Bethlehem they sped. Some of you have probably sat on a jury before. And the rest of us, we have seen enough law and order type TV shows that we have a good understanding of what it means to sit on a jury. In a trial, a line of witnesses come forward to testify that something is true. The jury listens to the evidence and then makes a decision. In a way, the Bible does that with Jesus. It's like you are in the jury box and the Bible is presenting a long line of witnesses to prove to you that Jesus is the Christ, the long-awaited Messiah, of the Old Testament times. Throughout those Old Testament times, 
about 4,000 years of history, God kept the promise alive that he would send a Savior. A Savior who would crush Satan's head. A Savior who would bless the entire world. That Savior, that Messiah, is Jesus. The Old Testament word Messiah is the New Testament word Christ. Both Christ and Messiah, even though they come from different languages, they both mean anointed or chosen. Jesus has been anointed or chosen to be the Savior of the world. The Bible presents a long line of witnesses to show you and to testify to you that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the Christ. He is the chosen one to be your Savior. So today, for a few minutes, think about yourself in a jury box. And let's take a look at some of the witnesses from Scripture that prove that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior sent by God. The first witness is John the Baptist. In fact, John was sent by God specifically to be the official witness of the Messiah. John is the promised forerunner of the Messiah. He fulfills those prophecies in the Old Testament times. John the Baptist is like a herald who's blowing a trumpet and pointing to Jesus and saying, this is him. This is the Messiah, the long promised savior of the Old Testament times. John is the official witness that God has sent on behalf of the Messiah, on behalf of Christ. The prophecy was this. It goes back to Malachi. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly, the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant, whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. And we heard in the gospel today, John speaking, I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. John is the official witness of the Messiah. On behalf of all the Old Testament people, prophets, priests, and kings, John, on behalf of them all, gets to point to Jesus and say, that's him. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. One of the things that John teaches us is that the work of the Messiah is to take away the sins of the world. That's the work of Christ, of Jesus, of the Savior. God had promised to send a Savior who would take away our sins like a sacrificial lamb. Jesus took our sins upon himself, and he carried them to a cross where he suffers and dies. He shed his blood as the once and for all sacrifice for sin. Every single sacrifice in the Old Testament times was a foreshadow of the Messiah. Every single sacrifice pointed forward um, to the Savior who would come. And take our sins away. Every single Old Testament sacrifice was teaching the people that God was going to send a Savior who was going to take away their sins. Jesus is that Savior. He is the Messiah, the Christ, the one that God sent for us. 
or as John the Baptist, the official witness of the Messiah, proclaims, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist, he still testifies today. You have heard his word in Holy Scripture. Today, believe that Jesus is the one that God sent for you and that your sins have been taken away from you and dealt with on the cross, on the cross of Christ, Jesus the Lord. And because of that, you now have peace with God. You have peace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven, and you've been given the gift of eternal life. The Lamb of God has taken your sins away. Not only did God send John the Baptist as the official witness so that you know that Jesus is the Christ, the promised Son of God and Savior of the world, but God the Father also testifies. Remember at Jesus' baptism, God the Father publicly speaks to the world and he testifies. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. God the Father rarely speaks in scripture, but when he does, he is testifying to you that Jesus is his son, the Messiah, the long-awaited Savior. God the Father was also at work in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. One of the ways that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is taught to us is that God the Father raised his son from the dead in order to testify to you that he really is the Savior of the world, the Christ, the Messiah. Here's what it says in Acts, for example. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to a cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. God the Father bears witness in words and in actions that Jesus is the Christ, the long-awaited Messiah. Today, believe the testimony of God the Father and understand what it means. It means that you do have a Savior who has done all the work of salvation for you. God sent the Messiah, his only begotten Son, to live and suffer and die for you. You really are forgiven. You really do have peace with God. You will certainly survive death and escape the final judgment. If God the Father's testimony was not enough, nor John the Baptist, the official witness of the Messiah, then there's even more. God the Holy Spirit is also a witness that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world. In John, Jesus teaches us this. Jesus said, when the Comforter comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, bears witness that Jesus is the Christ, the promised Savior of the world. The Holy Spirit's testimony 
is what we would normally call today the New Testament. The Holy Spirit inspired and guided and directed the apostles to write the truth of God's holy word down. We know it as the New Testament today. And at its center and in its core, the most important thing in the New Testament is that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, and that by believing in his name, you will have eternal life. Today, believe the testimony of the Holy Spirit as he works through the Holy Scriptures as he bears witness through the New Testament. God has not left you to die in your sins. He has sent a Savior for you. He sent his Son. He is the promised Messiah, the Christ, who rescues you and gives you life. When you think about life that you have in Christ, think about it in three ways. You have spiritual life right now. You are alive in Christ. You have faith in Christ. You are alive to God each and every day through faith. A second way to think about it is eternal life. That that because you're alive now, at the moment of death, you will be with Christ forever in heaven. Death has no power over you whatsoever. It's simply a transition into the kingdom of heaven. And the third way, think about life in terms of the resurrection of the dead on the last day. You have the hope of resurrection life, the confident assurance that your body will rise from the dead on the last last day. This gift of life comes through the Messiah, through Christ, Jesus, the Son of God, whose life, death, and resurrection secures life for you, spiritual life, eternal life, resurrection life. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. A biblical principle is that where two or three witnesses, it takes two or three witnesses to establish the truth. God has given you two or three witnesses. John the Baptist, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. They established the truth that Jesus is the Christ, the promised Savior of the world. But God doesn't stop with just two or three witnesses. He keeps going. If we had more time we could look at the Old Testament witness from the prophets, the patriarchs, the kings. We could see all the prophecies fulfilled in Jesus. We could take a look at all the types, the people and the things in the Old Testament that teach us and point us to Jesus as the Messiah and the Christ. We could listen to Jesus' own words. We could study his parables. We could review his miracles. We could hear the songs of the angels. We could study the genealogy of Jesus. And we could learn from the many, many individual testimonies that are recorded in Scripture The biblical evidence is overwhelming. Jesus is the Christ, the promised Savior of the world. Advent is a time when we once again get to hear this testimony that Jesus is the one. He is the Christ. He's that long-awaited Messiah. He is the chosen one, the anointed one to be the Savior of the world. Today, think about yourself as sitting in a jury box. 
and you have all of these witnesses telling you the same thing. Jesus is the Christ. Today, listen to the witnesses and believe. Amen. We pray. God the Father, we thank you for your testimony that Jesus is the Christ, your very own Son, the Savior of the world. We thank you for sending John the Baptist, who officially bears witness to Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah. We praise you for the New Testament, inspired by the Holy Spirit himself, which reveals Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the long-awaited Messiah, the Christ. Give us ears to hear and hearts that believe. During this Advent season, deepen our faith and conviction in Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the long-promised Savior of the Old Testament times. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you in worship next week.
is given so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his head no ear may hear his coming but in this world of sin where meek souls will receive him still the dear Christ enters in 